And now I'm really, really excited. I mean, really excited that I can announce and welcome our next presenter, which is my awesome, beautiful, and amazingly talented office partner, which is, by the way, in this building, just at the other end of the building. Michelle Jean Cummins. Now, I can tell you a lot about Michelle, but I'll keep it short and just read her bio. Ah, here it is. So Michelle Jean Cummins is an acupuncturist and she practices traditional Chinese medicine and herbalism. And this is where Western herbalism and Chinese herbalism meet. Um, she does I Ching readings and flower essence therapy, and she is available for individual and group sessions. She is going to lead a class which is called Jade Windscreen, exploring the immune system and herbs to strengthen through the lens of Chinese medicine. And that is a beautiful, beautiful uh, redirection that there are so many herbs that are used in different systems. However, there is a common denominator. And I think I'm just going to check if Michelle is coming in. I don't see her yet. We, I'll just keep talking. Let me see. Hi. Michelle. Hi. I hear you. Here I am. Yay. Okay, Michelle. Oh, hi. Okay. Hi. Go for it, girl. All right, girl. Well, Calendula. All right. Calendula Fest 2020. I'm really excited to, um, honored actually to have been asked to be a teacher. I spoke at last year's event and, um, you know, Calendula, the flower essence for Calendula is, um, a soft voice, um, a caring voice, a compassionate voice. And it's really about softening your voice so that you can be heard which is an interesting dynamic in this time when there's a lot of this uprising. Um, so I love the calendula. I love the opportunity to share my humble voice with you all. Um, and thank you for moderating, Claudia. Uh, that's great. Uh, my name is Michelle Jean Cummins. I'm a licensed acupuncturist and herbalist. I've been in practice in Mendocino County for um, 12 plus years now uh, in Willits and Laytonville. I recently closed my Laytonville practice and now um, I also practice in Lakeport where I'm coming to you live from right now in my home office. Um, and I offer um, acupuncture, herbal remedies, flower essence consultations and remedies, I Ching, Qigong movements, Gua Sha, cupping massage. Um, and I'm in Willits on Mondays and Wednesday, or Mondays and Thursdays, and Lakeport on um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I'm also available by telemedicine. Um, thanks for the herb to the Herb Guild for um, sharing my information. You can find it there if you want to know more. Um, I am offering a 20% off discount with um, for people who watch this class. Uh, so if you're interested and, and in setting up a session with me, uh, you get a 20% off discount. And um, the path, the secret password is Calendula 2020. Um, so if you tell me that, if you tell me that you watched this, come on in and get a session with a reduced rate. Um, so, um, yeah, here we are. Um, I just, uh, yeah, I just, I wanted to, um, talk about the immune system through the lens of Chinese medicine. And when I was thinking about wanting to do that, the thing that kept coming up was this ancient formula <coughs> called Jade Windscreen and uh, Yu Ping Feng San is its Chinese name. And so I, I wanna share with you today, um, I'm gonna discuss the Chinese medicine through the lens, a little bit of Western, and then through the lens of Chinese medicine so that we can translate those two. Um, and then I'm gonna dissect this popular formula, um, Yu Ping Feng San, the Jade Windscreen. Um, and then we'll have a brief question and answer um, period for this. So. Uh, under this waning strawberry moon with the lunar eclipse, it's a cool and windy day here in this time of so many great imbalances. We have um, a crisis, a health crisis, a global pandemic, um, a healthcare crisis, 
uh, environmental crisis and social civil crises as well. Um, and I'm humbled for the opportunity to share this information. It really, um, um, you know, where the microcosm of this macrocosm, and so all of these big things that are happening in our big universe are happening within us as well and are affecting us. So I think that's really important to be um, be aware of. Um, so my goal as a practitioner of Chinese medicine is to serve the higher good through um, advancement of this ancient knowledge, um, achievement of its achievements, and to help it gain recognition and appreciation um, so that my clients and everyone who receives this medicine um, can have increased clarity and the ability to achieve steady gains in understanding how we can prevent, treat, and heal um, all of these imbalances, whether they're external, internal, emotional, physical, environmental. Yeah, so that's the goal. Um, and I, I really am excited to share this formula because it's so simple and it's so elegant and it's so unique. Just like you, we are all unique. Your immune system is unique to you. Um, and I've been listening to the talks throughout the day and I really appreciated Jocelyn um, Beretta's community empowered health talk. Um, she talked about the herbal bus and um, putting together garden med medicinal garden care packages uh, or kits. And, uh, you know, I think that's a really good, I think if there's a theme we're running through today's uh, festival, it's definitely resiliency. And then uh, Anna Hope's coming up later to talk about uh, uh, herbal allies for fire recovery, which is another amazing thing that we need to be uh, really putting a lot of energy into because we are coming up on fire season. And, um, you know, the, the lungs are a huge part of the immune system, as we'll see as I go through this in relation with Chinese medicine. Um, and I was just thinking about <clears throat> this year, this time of year. My birthday is in February, and so is Chinese New Year. And so every year, that's kind of like my point of renewal. Um, kind of like where the seed starts to emerge or the new growth comes on after being dormant. Um, and it's the year of the metal rat in Chinese astrology. And so metal is the utmost yang and it also is related to the lungs. And if we think about um, the rat, the rat is this little creature that's like, you know, go over here and then make a, a erupt sudden movement and come over here and then come over here and Board a bunch of things and um, it's kind of like this energy right now is like very young it's very there's changes and so these abrupt erratic movements um, and so when we look at the immune system what we want to do is bring things back into balance I looked at the I Ching for the year as well and there were two trigrams one of them uh, the I Ching is a book of change Chinese oracle uh, similar to the Tarot little serendipity to get answers and guidance, right? So this year's card had thunder and wind as the trigrams. And so thunder is this like energy that happens in the heavens and it is a boom, it shakes and it shocks the universe. Um, so it causes these quick, sudden, abrupt changes, much like what we're experiencing um, on so many levels in so many areas of our lives right now, collectively and individually. Um, and then wind, wind can be soft and gentle and just kind of like caress or it can be hard and like really penetrate and get into like every single hair on, up, you know, in the, the jacket. Um, so those are the, the environmental qualities that are going to be expressing themselves a lot in culture. Um, according to the I Ching for the year 2020, metal rat. Um, <laughs> so the immune system is precisely that. It's a system. It's not one single entity or an, or, or an organ. Um, and in order to function well, it really, really requires balance and harmony. Um, and your first line of defense is really your immune system. And so thinking about what you can do, the first line of defense is to really make healthy life choices. So that's like regular acupuncture and body work. Um, a diet high in fresh fruits and vegetables, herbal herbs and supplements, um, regular exercise, uh, um, doing, you know, if you're going to smoke or drink or anything like that, just be sure to do it in moderation and really, uh, you know, uh, examine your relationship with it. 
Um, and sleep is so important. Adequate sleep is important. And um, de-stressing is probably the number one of my top 10 lists or however many are in this list. Um, uh, de-stress. Yeah, find ways to de-stress. Dance, sing, move, sleep, meditate, create, you know, whatever it is. Breathe, talk. I know. Find it. Do it. Um, so if we look at the immune system through the lens of Western medicine, and I'm going to start with this right now because I want to be able to translate it into Chinese medicine. <laughs> Western medicine says that the overall function of the immune system is to prevent or limit infection. It's the system that protects the body from foreign substance, substances, cells, and tissues by producing the immune response, especially um, the, the thymus, the spleen, the lymph, and then it has like T cells and um, B cells and lymphocytes and macrophages and all of these parts to make up the whole, right? It's a system. Um, so that's it from the Western point of view. And then if we go to the East and, um, you know, look at Chinese medicine, the language is so different. In Western medicine, language around the immune system is um, a lot of the words are like recognize, mobilize, attack, defense, eliminate, surveillance, um, autoimmune, like all of these words that suggest like this, um, this battle. And in Chinese medicine, um, the language around it is really different. It's, um, it's, um, yeah, so in Chinese medicine, we, the uh, practitioners, the, the philosophy views the um, body as a whole organic system that works to maintain balance. Um, and it runs in the chi and the blood and kind of like along the skin. Um, whereas, you know, the Western system, it runs in the endocrine and pituitary adrenal lymph system. So it's kind of a, it's a really different, different sets of um, language. Um, so Chinese medicine in diagnosing and treating, there's a, a pattern that I'd like to um, apply to gathering information and being able to figure out the balance. And it's called the eight principles. There's, when I look at a client, I'm looking at, are, are their symptoms internally generated or externally generated? Is it a heat pattern? Is it a cold pattern? Um, is it interior? Is it exterior? I said that, that one. Interior, exterior. Um, is it excess or deficiency? Is it warm and cold? And then ultimately, is it yin or yang? And so then, right, you can see how we're starting with balance, cold, and warm, inside and ex outside. It's a, finding a balance, de-stressing, um, not overthinking things. That's kind of where the immune system get, can maintain its strength. That's how you can support it. And so in Chinese medicine, uh, the immune system, there's really three main parts to it. There are the um, 15 types of energy, 15 types of qi, there's the organs, and then there's the pathogens. And so the 15 types of qi are um, like, there's the primal yuan qi, which is the ancestral DNA qi that you're born with. And then there's other acquired qi energy, which is like, food, love, laughter, air, water, sex, all of the things that nurture you. Um, and so those are the external pathogens. And then the internal pathogens are um, emotions like joy, anger, anxiety, preoccupation, fear, fright. Um, and based on the status of the internal and external pathogens, where they're at, if, if you're able to keep them out and keep them calm inside the body, um, then you're less likely to be affected by viruses or those pathogens um, by having a healthy immune system. And so the immune system in Chinese medicine, the word, well, there's not a direct translation, but the word for it that I would say is probably the Wei Qi, W-E-I, space QI, Wei Qi, that's the immune system in Chinese medicine. And what it is, is it's a defensive Qi, an energy that circulates around our body like a screen, a wind screen. And this formula that I'm talking about is Yu Ping Feng San, Yu being jade, and jade is this precious, um, upright, 
upright, utmost beauty, um, truth. It's like all that is good is jade. Um, so jade windscreen is the name of this formula. And uh, it's good because it protects us uh, in this beautiful screen that keeps pathogens out. So it is precious like the jade. Um, so the way cheat, right, it, um, it circulates uh, outside the blood vessels and the skins, the pores, the muscles, the hair and the lymph system. And it, it, um, it really deals with the opening and closing of the pores. Um, and it's strongly connected to the lungs. The lungs are the unique because they're the only organ that's actually open to the exterior world. When we inhale air, we, our lungs have direct contact with the external environment. It's not processed through any other organs or um, processes, metabolic process in the body. Um, so it's kind of like this big donut, right? We can inhale and then the outside, um, our skin, right? The lung energy disperses along the skin as well as this Wei Qi. So the lung and the Wei Qi interact there on the skin to keep the skin, to keep the, the shield nice and strong. Um, and uh, so that's probably my, the type of Qi, that is the type of Qi that I would consider, I would translate to the immune system. Um, and then there's three organs as well in Chinese medicine that, uh, that are closely tied to the immune system. Yeah. It's easy. Um, and those are, starting with the root cause of most imbalances is the kidney. And that's where that Yuan primary, um, um, primordial ancestral energy hangs out is in the kidney. And it's kind of like this little fire with a cauldron sitting on top of it. And then the spleen stomach or the food inside of the cauldron. And then, the steam vapor rises up, hits the, the lungs, and kind of um, goes down and moistens and nourishes everything else in the body. Um, so the kidneys are that fire that keeps it all going. And so most imbalances in the immune system have a root in the kidney. And then the lung, of course, I've mentioned the lung a couple times from the Chinese medicine view, um, right? Respiration, skin, hair, the emotion, grief, um, letting go. That's a big one um, for, the, for people who have lung deficiencies. Um, and it is the metal uh, element. So here we are in a metal year on the Chinese um, calendar. And um, the spleen, the spleen is also really important because the spleen digests nutrients from the stomach and it also gets the water from the stomach and the spleen energy, the chi of the spleen is in charge of transforming and transporting fluids throughout the body. And so those fluids flow in the spaces on the, under, just under the skin and when we perspire they leak out. Um, those fluids are, are moved by the energy of the chi or the chi of the spleen, as well as the lung and the wei chi. Um, and it, it also brings that nourishment from the food to circulate it throughout the whole body. So we have the types of chi, the pathogens, the organs. Now that we know about that, let's talk about, let's dissect this awesome formula I've alluded to called Yu Ping Feng San, the Jade Windscreen Formula. Simple. Elegant. I really love it. Um, Yu Ping Feng San was used in the 2003 SARS outbreak uh, to boost immunity, SARS being the sudden acute respiratory syndrome. And Terry Turner, who was just on, talked about um, how this coronavirus is a kind of a branch of the SARS with a different, uh, with rings around it, like a crown around it. So, um, so, it, so we have a lot of information, actually thousands of years worth of information to look back in Chinese medicine. China, for some reason, um, has had many, pan, uh, not pandemics, epidemics. Um, and you know, and it's, it's really fascinating. But for thousands of years, they've been documenting um, these, the treatments for these epidemics in books as early as 
about like 2000 years ago was this book called the Shang Han Lun Wen Bing, the treatise on cold disease, cold and hot diseases uh, was specifically based on epidemics and herbal treatments. It's really extreme stuff, but uh, really awesome. And so we're able to apply that still today. Um, let's see and the chinese hospitals last week mandated the use of chinese of chinese herbs for COVID patients which is exciting and then also in the 16th century in the ming dynasty um, there was a vaccine made for smallpox where the doctors would take the scabs make a powder of it and blow it up the nose of a healthy person who hasn't had it yet and basically inoculate them with it. And that was an early vaccine that is still being used today, which is really fascinating. And I think Terry also, our talks overlap a lot, but uh, also mentions uh, that those types of um, like homeopathic doses of vaccines or micro doses of, of medicines. Um, the Hong Kong University of uh, Science and Technology found recently that it's um, an effective formula to ward off airborne pathogens during cold and flu season. So here we are, ring-a-ding-ding, that's perfect. Um, and when I put together a formula for a client, I like to work in formulas rather than in simplers than giving one single herb. I like to use the synergy uh, of the way the herbs work together, kind of like a painting. And I'm going to paint the picture of what a client's health would look like. I'd set the herbs out on a paper and you have this beautiful you know, piles of herbs and it's just, every time it's just picturesque and gorgeous. Um, so the for, I love this formula because it's like a checks and balance. It, you know, there's herbs that strengthen the, and release the exterior and then there's herbs that tonify the interior, which is like a delicate situation to treat because you're like strengthening and it's like you're you know strengthening and tonifying and you know there's pathogens what if you trap them inside oh all these questions that go, go through my head but over time um, I learned a lot right the lung energy spreads way chi to the skin the kidney roots the roots and feet it roots down the breath the spleen helps move the nourishment so when you understand these pieces and how they come together it's the holistic aspect of using herbs uh, so um, with the yuping feng san it, it treats um, spontaneous sweating like when the way when the way chi can't keep the pores closed and the person sweats a lot um, aversion to wind, the people who are, you know, always kind of like hiding from the wind and trying to hunker down and cover up. Um, a pale face, a white tongue coat, and the pulse feels just deficient, deficient in chi and blood and just kind of weak and deep. Um, the Chinese treatment for that is to tonify the immune system, the wei chi, protect the exterior, and stop spontaneous sweating. A strange cold in that precious fluid. Um, there are three herbs in this formula, and those are astragalus, attractyloides, and uh, silo roots. So let's talk about astragalus. Astragalus is a great herb because it's a Chinese herb that has um, naturalized into the Western pharmacopoeia, which is awesome. <laughs> that makes me so happy. I love those bridges. Um, and it's the chief herb. In Chinese herbalism, there's chief deputy assistant envoys. The chief and the chief is, addresses the main issue. The deputy helps that one. The assistant helps with the kind of sides and symptoms and like branch treatments. And then the envoy moves the herbs to the place they need to go. They're like the the cavalcade or the you know the line of cars that drives drives the prince to the tower. <laughs> Um, so astragalus membranaceous uh, strengthens the wei chi at the exterior, increases the body's defense, um, especially the lungs. It has an affinity for the lungs. Um, University of Texas showed that the extracts could completely restore functions of immune cells in cancer patients, which is really awesome to see um, herbs being studied on that level. And you know, yeah, just so so many things. Um, it's, uh, it has polysaccharides and saponins and flavonoids in it, and um, it circulates in the kind of in the interior, right? Um, so that, um, 
yeah, it circulates in the interior, whereas another herb circulates in the exterior. You'll see how they connect in a moment here. So astragalus is really amazing. And then the second herb, the um, deputy, is by Zhu, which is attractive ladies. And this one um, strengthens exterior and it stops spontaneous sweating. Um, it also has an affinity with the spleen. It strengthens the spleen energy so that the spleen energy can um, reach and circulate water and nutrients to on the exterior part of the body so um yeah that's pretty that's pretty neat that it the the indication for the herb is to treat the exterior but the way that it does it is by tonifying the interior um, and that's kind of the dynamic play that this beautiful formula has to it um, Let's see, anything else about attractive loides by Ju? Yeah, it's probably like the number one herb for the spleen. That's like the most commonly herbed, uh, spleen herb um, out there that's used. And when you combine those two, astragalus and by Ju, it strengthens the energy by strengthening the spleen sheet, which is just, that's like the key piece, because I think a lot of people who have, are getting really sick from this virus are people who um, have a lot of dampness in their body. Pretty, uh, and so then, so that's astragalus by Zhu, and then we have feng feng, which is um, silar root. It's actually in the carrot family. And this um, is a really, in, uh, Saposchnikovia de Barcate is the Latin name of it. Um, silar root is its common name. And this one dispels um, it's an astringent herb to release the exterior is the category that it's in, right? So it's, it's squeezes out to release and push out pathogens. So it's like feng feng is out here and then spleen is just below it and then the, the or, and then uh, baiju is below it and then astragalus is like working more on the interior. So interior, medial, superficial, right? So you can see how this herb affects us on many levels. Um, and they come together synergistically to create this awesome formula. Um, those are the three herbs. And I want to say that, um, you know, I did a, um, a apprenticeship at the Chinese Medicinal Herb Farm in Petaluma. And you can, with Peg Schaefer, you can always get seeds from her for Chinese medicines. But I've, I got um, astragalus and um, silar root, feng feng, which is in the carrot family. It's really easy to grow and use. Um, that, I got those two herbs from Strictly Medicinal. And then the um, baiju I've gotten from Peg Schaefer at Chinese Medicinal Herb Farm. And I've also gotten it from sacredseed.com. Um, and, uh, you know, Donna Deterra did the talk on growing medicinal herbs. Uh, Noble, Sierra, and Kurt did the Stewards of the Land, where they talked about these amazing treatments to get microbes going in your soil. Um, and Yvonne Mayshark is going to be talking about herbal medicine making with oils and vinegars a little bit later. This is so cool. This, the way all of the um, talks today came together to really... Um, lay a really solid foundation for someone interested in building resilience through um, herbal medicine and just align, aligning ourselves with the plant world as well. Super important. Um, plant, animal, mineral, that's the pharmacopoeia for Chinese medicine is plant, animal, and mineral um, specimens in it. <laughs> So in Western medicine, this uh, formula is an amino stimulant, an antiviral, a nephroprotective, protects the nephrons in the kidneys so that it can um, flush and, recruit and release hormones properly into the system and all of that. Um, and it's an adaptogenic, which is um, pretty cool. And it's used on respiratory tract infection, allergic rhinitis, um, abnormal per perspiration, facial paralysis. Um, nephritis um, helps kind of cleanse the kidney out a little bit um, and then just uh, bolstering the bodies too so that we don't get common cold and flu. The dosage, um, dosage, well you, know, you have to take it from one to five months for it to start where it's like going to the gym, you know, if you lift weights you're not going to get buff going twice, you got to go for like a whole two months so that's kind of how this one works. It is a workout for the body and it just makes you stronger. Um, 
There are some concerns about taking immunostimulators for people with autoimmune diseases, um, but this one has been shown because of the balance that it has to this formula to be, to be really helpful because it's not only is it an immune booster, but it's also an immune modulator. So it's amphoteric, which means that if the body's in excess, it sedates. And if the body is in deficiency, it tonifies. And so um, this is an amphoteric herb, a lot like herbs you may be common with, um, hawthorn, um, lemon balm, amphoteric, takes care of it all. Um, and, you know, up next we talk about, um, Caitlin. Caitlin's going to be talking about building resilience with adaptogens and nervines, and I just think that this is the perfect place to uh, leave off and um, go to some question and answer. Yeah, that's great. Actually, we do have questions for you, Michelle. Awesome. So, go for first it. of all, you know what you're, what you're talking about, but it might be really great if you, um, you were asked to write the names of the herbs in the chat. But I was wondering if you could ask you to kind of give us, you know, like a protocol that could, you could upload to the website with all. Yeah, the actually, I was, um, I realized that. I'm going to, um, I have a, uh, I have my, my notes. I'm going to compile them into a handout and um, pass it on to the Herb Guild as a PDF. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. of course. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't have it done yet, but I, uh, that, that's something that I would like to share. I just, uh, thanks so much for taking the time just to listen and absorb because it, Chinese medicine really is a whole other language. So, uh, yeah. yeah. But you yeah. Know, you know, and, I, and I'm also like a mix of clinical and <laughs> clinical mm -hmm. and fun stuff. So, do you what have, else? Do you have the formula at the office? I do. Mm -hmm. I have it in. Um, I have it in tincture, and I have it in a um, in capsule form as well. That's great. And here's another question. I would appreciate the Latin names of the last two in the formula. So you see, we we have to yes. we have to dig deeper here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So that the first herb was Huang Chi Astragalus membranaceus. The second herb was Bai Zhu Atractyloides macrocephale. Yeah. Atractyloides macrocephale. Doing great. And uh, fung, fung silar root is Saposhnikovia divaricate. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll include that in the handout. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then there was a question. Let me see. I, you know, I missed one earlier, so, but I think I'm doing pretty good here. All right, now we're talking immune support. Would you would you like to maybe share some some acupressure points? Oh sure. Okay. Yeah. So 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 when I when I look at the um, you know the what what the treatment is that this formula does it you know it tonifies the wei qi it protects exterior it stops spontaneous sweating. I want to do um, I would do acupuncture points that did that too. It's like another style, more paints for my palette, right? Um, and so the two points that I like to do that are kind of a, a combination pair that are really great for um, just boosting the immune system are both on the hand. The first one is um, large intestine four, and it's between the thumb and the pointer finger in this web here. And you just kind of like put your finger right in the middle and press on it. This point is really amazing because it, um, innovate, it, it activates energy, chi movement throughout the whole body. It's also in the large intestine meridian, which starts here and travels up. And guess what? It goes across the front of the face, and it's the only meridian that crosses the body to end here. So it's the only meridian that crosses the midline of the body, which is super cool. Um, but it's also kind of the drain point for anything going on in the face. If there's excess mucus or headache or eyes or sore throat this is the point for anything on the face mm -hmm. um, and conveniently it moves chi throughout the whole body it's also called the dragon's mouth wah, 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 wah. like the dragon yeah dragon's yeah. mouth uh, <laughs> mouth of the dragon and um then the other point is not far if you're pointing to that point here and then you just move your finger up and you kind of like give yourself a handshake mm -hmm. there's a place where that's into the finger this is lung seven 
the place where the finger lands, and it's kind of like on the top of the bone, and it's between two ligaments. You find a little valley between the two ligaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that one just tonifies the lung and strengthens the lung. So these two points are really close to each other, right? You have large intestine four, and then shake your hand. You have lung seven. And then you have the, those two points. So it could be like the two minute a day immune boost. <laughs> is there anybody who, is this good for everybody or is there anybody who shouldn't use them? Those are great for everybody. It's they're you know, they're really gentle tonifying points. And when you're massaging them, it really is a lot of it. It's about like the intent that you're putting into them and um, just taking that time to slow down and breathe and just focus on, on the self you know, it de-stresses us and it really is like, it's, it's empowering and um, it's good for the immune system on the physical level, the emotional, mental, spiritual level, really, to just stop and um, give, the, give the body some love. And those points are gentle, effective, really commonly used points. Okay, I have more questions coming in. Oi. Okay, um, this is going back to the formula you mentioned. Is this a formula you can take regularly or seasonal? Can be confusing with immune formula. Great, okay. So um, this is a formula that is usually taken seasonally um, as both a uh, preventative and a treatment. It's taken usually in the acute stages of cold and flu. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like I said, you know, depending on the strength of your immune system, you could take it from, you, you would, you have to take it regularly. So anywhere from one to five months, depending on the strength of your immune system versus the strength of the pathogens that you're up against. Mm -hmm. uh, so one to five months. So a lot of people will start taking this kind of like in the midsummer um, to to be ready for the like kind of fall winter flu season um oh and they'll do other things too like um start um you know to taking like um cold cold showers that help kind of like close the pores and um yeah just beginning to start to cool the body down as summer ends so that um yeah so that we're not bringing the heat from summer. Wait, is this making sense? Rewind. Yeah. So we want to like cool the exterior um, so that it can keep the nutrients in. Does that make sense? Yeah. I went off on a tangent. <laughs> so then they're also asking here, what did you say was beneficial for facial paralysis? Um, this formula is beneficial for patients okay. for facial paralysis because facial paralysis um, is the paralysis of the facial nerve, right? And so usually what facial paralysis is caused by an exterior pathogen of wind. So we have the exterior pathogens, wind, wind cold, heat, dryness, damp, and summer heat. And wind is kind of like the, the train that drives it into the, that is like, come on, you guys, and invites the other pathogens on, and then it'll drive it into the body with the hopes that it can like get into the organs, right? That's the pathogen's goal is to infiltrate. Um, but if we have our wind screen up, then the wind can't penetrate into the body. Um, but so facial paralysis is, is considered an exterior wind pathogen and that nerve is real close up on the skin here. So a lot of times when people have facial paralysis, they won't be able, like a lot, I had a client a couple of years ago who um, had gotten facial paralysis one day when she went on a boat um, in the San Francisco Harbor and she didn't have anything to kind of cover her head and neck with. And because the wind penetrated and the virus was released into the nerve, right? It, it is a virus. It's a, the herpes virus. It's in that family of virus. Um, okay. Yeah. So this, okay, this treatment. Now. now the next. What's up? That's great. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. Now we have mm -hmm. more questions coming in. Isn't L leave for an abortion point aren't you supposed to make sure you're not pregnant yes that is true thank you for that who brought that point up that is great um large intestine four it large intestine four is contraindicated for 
um, abortions. Thank you. I mean, are contraindicated in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, that's good. And then mm -hmm. the same lady also would like you to show lung seven again, what it is good for. Oh, lung seven. Um, here, we have it. Mm -hmm. And it is, it really, it's like, it strengthens the lung. And it's, it's kind of an imperial point for strengthening the lung. Nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I know we have a few more minutes. So um, words of wisdom, Michelle, what do you, would you like to tell us, you know, considering everything that's going on? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I think it's important to honor the self on the, um, on the deep level so that we can have a healthy interior. And then in the the medial level, like how we interact with the world is really important. And then on kind of the more superficial level, really keeping all three of those levels strong so that we can, you know, so that we can kind of filter all of the external pathogenic factors and the internal pathogenic factors and just um, de-stress. De-stress. De-stress is really important. Yeah. Okay, there's another question coming in. It's, uh, it's about the formula with the facial thing. I think we answered that it is the formula and the good news is it is available at Cultivate Wellness Studio at the Little Lake Grange in room four. So that is really very helpful. And is there any last suggestions um, like nutrition wise, anything that could be like helping to keep our stress manageable? Mm -hmm. Well, nutrition, let's see. One of the, um, one of the gems of Chinese culture uh, food wise is that for breakfast they eat this thing called a congee, C-O-N-G-E-E. -E. And the congees are, um, it's like a rice porridge. And so basically it's like nine cups of water to one cup of rice and then you add in other herbs. And, um, you cook it, you bring it to a boil and then let it on a super, the lowest heat you can get, let it cook for eight hours, eight, six to eight hours. So I do that overnight. And then in the morning you have this rice porridge and I like to um, put astragalus and uh, other herbs yeah. into it. And what it does is it breaks it down so much mm -hmm. and it makes it so bioavailable for, um, yeah, it makes it bioavailable for the body to receive the, the medicine. And then um, when the rice breaks down too, it's kind of like, it's like, a, it's got all of the sweetness and um, all of the undertones of it come out. So you're really able to get that deep nourishment. The rice roots go deep into the earth and pull up so many minerals. Mm -hmm. um, we can truly get them when the rice is cooked down literally for eight hours. I think a lot of people are loving the instant pot because they can, um, they can just uh, do it. And it's so much easier than having a crock pot going all night or low flame. So, and actually the yeah. great that you mentioned, uh, um, Oh, something is, can you hear me? Yeah. So yeah. this is great that you mentioned, this is the culinary use of herbs, which actually we haven't spent that much time today, but it's so important and it goes for Western herbalism just as much as the Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine, right? So if you cook something that long, I'm sure it will release a lot of properties then into the kanji and this is how you can, uh, you know, get the benefit of, of the herbs as food. So I, I think that's, that's great you mentioned that. Because this is something I like myself to do a lot. And not particular kanji, but use herbs and roots as food. So that's awesome. All right, Michelle. Yeah, you mentioned, you mentioned the calendula petals. So I often put calendula petals in my yeah. flower, in my yeah. salads. And yeah. And actually, in the Middle Ages, they also put the whole herb, well, the upper part, into soups and stocks, which, you know, there was nothing else, I guess. So they really became very savvy in using whatever they would find in the field. And at that time it was also called like the pot herb. So yeah, this is what excites me that there's so much out there 
that when we eat it, it gives us so much goodness and the body knows how, how to deal with it in that way through the digestive process. All right, well, we are at the end of our time. Michelle, thank you so much. And yeah. Thank great you to the Herbal Guild and all the organizers and check out the herbal vendors that are online too. Don't forget to go over there and see what they got. There's some good stuff. I know I'm gonna be buying some. Oh, oh wait. Wait, I have another question for you, Michelle. Oh, Whoa. yes. Okay. Can we use a rice cooker on warm or a crock pot for kanji? Um, the, you have to, it's, you use a crock pot or um, on an open flame. And it's, it's a one cup of rice to nine cups of water. Bring it to a boil and then let it, bring it down to the lowest flame you can and let it cook for six to eight hours. And it's a porridge. So it's yeah. porridge for breakfast. Right. And again, you mentioned you have a discount for appointments for everyone who's watching today. Yeah, yeah. So I'm offering a 20% discount on appointments for one time only for people who watch this video and the secret password. The code is Calendula2020. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. Let <Right>. me know. <laughs> Super. Okay, Michelle. See you soon. Thank sure. you. Yeah. One more thing that is only um, because this is going to go out into the ether, into the, into the interwebs, um, that 20% uh, discount is only um, valid for a month. So that is until um, June, July 7th. Okay, very good. So there you have it, people. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.